Disclaimer, I have been doing this for more than 10 years, but still actually I have no idea what I'm doing. I just do what I think looks good. Some like it, others don't. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Remember, art is subjective. brand new YouTube channel, Seb and Beyond. And since this is my first video, I'm gonna do a quick introduction, and if you don't care about that part, you can just skip through. First off, I wanna apologize for my English. I'm from a little mitten-shaped country called Norway, and it's getting freezing most of the time. So you have to spend all of your time making warm clothes, putting wood in the fireplace, and drinking hot coffee to survive the cold. So there's really not a lot of time to practice your English. Some of you might know me from some of the car photography groups on Facebook and you might be wondering, isn't your name Sandra and not Sebastian? Well, I was born Sondre Sebastian Hagen in the cold snowy mountains of Norway. And since Sandra isn't that much of a worldwide name, I've been using Sebastian a lot on the internet. But enough about me, I'm not here to bore you, so let's jump into Adobe Lightroom. First off, here is the image. Uh, it's quite overexposed, but it's such a sick shot that I just wanted to edit it. So we are going to go ahead with that. Uh, first thing I see, of course, is that I have to take the exposure down quite a lot. Uh, like this, I think this looks good. Uh, we're going to increase the contrast just a little bit to make it pop a little bit more. Uh, and also, I think I want to make it a little bit warmer. Uh, just a personal taste, but I like my pictures quite warm for some reason. I just tend to go for that. Uh, for the tint here, uh, I think we are going to go with something like 11 maybe. Uh, the highlights, I think we are going to leave untouched because there's not a lot of detail left up here. So there's not much to save. So I'm just going to keep that where it is. The shadows, I think we can leave the shadows, but I intend to dehaze it a little bit and uh, do some stuff in the curves. So I think that we can actually increase that quite a lot. Uh, making the white a little bit more white because I don't like this. It looks weird to me. It still looks weird, but yeah, maybe a little better. Uh, making the blacks a little bit darker, adding in some texture and yeah, I think we're going to add a little bit of clarity to this. Okay, for the DH slider. This one, I love it. Like, I do this a lot in my images, and I tend to overdo it like crazy, but I think it just looks so good. Maybe a lot of people will disagree with that, but it just looks so good in my eyes. For the tone curves right here, uh, I'm just gonna make a like, standard S-curve here. I just usually do this, make three points like this, and go from there. Uh, the highlights, it's not a lot to save in the highlights, so I think we're just gonna leave it at that. Maybe go the mids a little bit down. Yeah, we're totally gonna make this a little bit darker here because I upped it so much up here. Uh, and the fade, like a lot of people love adding a lot of fade to their images. I'm not a huge fan of that because you lose a lot of details in the dark, but for you guys, I'm gonna do a little bit here. You can see the difference. Next up is the Hue, Saturation and Luminance tab uh, down here. And for this, I think, like, first off, I really want to take out the Aquas. Like, this, you don't need those. I don't see a point in having them there. Uh, and I can also take out a little bit of blue to make it look more realistic because it's quite blue right now. And as I told you, I don't like my edits that blue. Uh, for the rest here, maybe make the yellows pop a little bit. I like that because the car is yellow. Um, for the rest here, I don't really see a point in doing much here. Usually, like the purple and the magentas are usually uh, like in their faces and a lot of the areas and like on the ground. But in this image, I don't really see much uh, except for this little what is this seat belt hoodie hoodie that's the hoodie yeah and um hue there's not a lot of reds uh there's a little bit of green maybe in the trees in the back there i don't know if you can see it but like making those a little more yellow here 
makes it a little bit better in my opinion you might not be able to see it that well uh, the aquas we took out but we can make it more neutral like you can still see that it's affecting the image and i don't like that orange and teal kind of look to it uh, so we are going to make that a little bit more blue or purple blue i guess uh, for the luminance, again, there's not really much other than the yellow here that we don't have to do much with, really. The blues, uh, I don't have to do much about that either, so we can just keep it like this. Now for the split toning. Uh, usually what I do is just increase the saturation like this and then drag until I find like a color that seems well. I think we're going to go with like this blue right here because it's a little warm maybe. And I'm just going to drag it slightly up right here. You see the difference? Making it a little colder again. Um, I also tend to like change my mind a lot when I do this. So uh, same for the shadows. We're just going to go up and down here and see what I like. I think I want it to be a little more like this in the shadows to kind of warm it up again uh, a little bit in the shadows. And I'm just gonna drag it until it looks good. Now it's starting to look more neutral. Still keeping that a little bit cold because it's snowy and I want it to be a little cold. I think somewhere right here looks good. See the difference? It's not a lot, but it's a little bit. Uh, you can totally see it warm. Now you're cooling down the uh, snow here and the sky, but we're gonna replace this later, so that doesn't matter too much. So now that we've gotten this far, I think it looks quite good, but we are going to look at, I think we're gonna do a little bit of calibration down here. Uh, usually I do a lot of vignetting. I think uh, vignetting looks great, but I'm gonna put this into Photoshop later and change a lot of stuff. So I'm not going to uh, bother doing that right now. So with the calibration, I think this looks a little, purple-ish for my taste, uh, so I'm going to make it a little greener. Uh, for the red primary, you, you can see what it changes here. Uh, and actually it looks good towards this side, towards the minus side. Just going to add a little bit of that. I'm not going to bother with the saturation with this image, or on the reds at least. Um, and for this one, this like going here would look more artsy in my opinion, but that's not what I'm going for right now. That's not really my style, to be honest. So I think we're going to leave it down here somewhere. Uh, actually, boosting the saturation looks good too, in my opinion. Uh, but I kind of like that kind of rugged, faded, you know, really make the yellows pop in this image. So we're going to go a little bit towards the minus. Now for like the orange and teal look that everybody everybody loves, I'm not gonna do that, but I do actually think that it looks a little good doing it on the minus side here. So we're, we are going to do a little bit of minus on this one. Uh, for all these, I usually don't do much of these, to be honest. Uh, hardly ever use them, so I'm not going to bother using them this time either. Uh, and another great trick is actually changing the channel down here uh, to red, green, and blue and adjust accordingly, but I don't feel like we need this for this image. Uh, so one thing that it's I can do is maybe crop it a little bit, or at least cropping I'm going to do later, and this I also can do later actually, because I'm putting it in Photoshop first. So I'll see you in Photoshop. So now that we are in Photoshop, uh, I'm going to start replacing what's up here because as I said, it's just overexposed and there's really nothing interesting going on. And we got this weird line here with snow that just looks, it looks unnatural to me and it looks weird because it's overexposed. So I'm just going to take the pen tool and I'm just going to mask it out. You don't have to be too accurate doing this actually because look at how it looks already we're gonna fix it up anyways so what i do i just do like this and i just go outside the lines here it's probably a better way to be doing all this but this is just the way that i do it 
Uh, I've now selected the area. I go Control Shift N to make a new layer. And what I like to do, just in case I can see the background, is make it bright pink or bright any color really. And just paint in right here. You can use Paint Bucket tool. Uh, but as I said, I have my ways that I just they're just stuck with me. My computer is a little bit slow at loading right now. I've ordered a new SSD of uh, a web page. Um, and it hasn't arrived yet. It was supposed to arrive today, so I was hoping to do this with my new SSD. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm, that's not gonna, going to happen because it's it fills up the cache and makes it lag a little bit. Uh, and now that we have this masked out, uh, I'm going to find uh, an image on the internet. I'm just going to search snowy mountain or something <coughs> like that. Probably not allowed to say <coughs> on the internet. I don't know. Whatever. Going on pixels, I found this uh, image right here that I like. I think we can use this. So we are going to drag it into Photoshop to see how it looks um, like this. I think this will work. It's not really the correct angle, but we we're going to make it work because we are going to add motion blur. blur. We are going to add motion blur later. Uh, so what I do? Uh, right click it and create clipping mask. So we can make it fill the screen right here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Bit. Um, looking at it like this, it doesn't look like it fits that well. I'm going to zoom it in a little just in case. Doesn't fit that well, but, okay, but we are going to do Control T to transform, and I'm going either skew or perspective to kind of just change it up a little bit. I think we are. When I do this, I shift click. By the way, uh, shift click it and make it seem. As I said, we are going to motion blur it a little bit later, so this will be fine. I think actually that we can do something like this. This doesn't look that shabby. As you, you can tell that it's not really the correct angle, but it'll work out in the end, I think. We're going to change it to scale here. Scale it up a little bit. Computer being slow again. I think we can work with this, to be honest. Uh, we might have to change it up a little bit later. Um, but we'll see. Uh, then I'll go filter and blur gallery and do path blur. Uh, this is also a great way to do fake rollers. Rollers. Um, if you understand how this works, like to be honest, I don't really know how motion blur really works. But the further away something is, the less motion blurry it gets. So I can probably spend some time here kind of masking out the trees here and make uh, less motion blur for these closer trees and a lot now less make a lot less motion blur in the back here and more in the front but we're not gonna bother doing that actually uh, we're gonna set the end point speed a little less because these are going to be uh, further away than what's close here in the beginning uh, Set the end point speed. Why is the end point speed changing? Now oh, there we go. Maybe a little bit less. So now we're here. Uh, I'm just going to show you quickly on this layer. I'm not, go not, not going to do it, but you can right click it and go convert to smart object. It's so you can like disable and change this up later if you want to change it. So you're going to do this uh, right off the bat. I see that our front image here is a lot more blue, a lot colder than uh, the back here. So I'm just going to slap on a photo filter. There's a bunch of ways you can do this, but I think adding on, uh, I think actually this filter will do just fine. Just make it a little bit colder to kind of match the image. Something like this. Doesn't look too bad. Makes it makes it look a lot better. Yeah, like this. We're going to keep it like this. So something I noticed right off the bat right here is at this edge it looks it looks way too sharp uh, it looks way too sharp so what I'm gonna do I'm just going to mask out a little bit here and just using the lasso tool I'm gonna right click create a copy and now we we got this like you as you see now we got the background here again 
I'm just gonna control click the image right here and we'll select this and we can just go and delete this again. And now after doing that, I'm going to add a blur and I'm going Gaussian blur. And you can't really see it that well right now, but if I change this to something like, I don't know, makes it a little bit trickier. We're just gonna 24 maybe looks good right here. And I'm just going to use uh, control J to duplicate it to make it look a little bit better. Maybe something like this. I'm just duplicating them to make the effects more apparent. I'm just going to group them to sort them out. And because we did the cutting right here and blurring them, you can't really see right here because it's so overexposed. Something like this looks kind of good in my opinion. So I think we're pretty golden there. And I instantly noticed that we did not add on the speed here again. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Is it the end point? Yeah, it's the end point speed right here. I'm just gonna click OK on that. And then I'm gonna take uh, Control Shift N and do a new layer. And the light is coming from here somewhere in the background. So I'm thinking that, okay, first off, actually I'm going image because this image is huge. So I'm going to change it to something like 2000 in height. Just make it a little smaller, a little easier to work with since this image is not really, doesn't need to be this high of a resolution. Uh, I'm going to just use a white brush here to create like a flaring kind of thing. Just show that the light is coming from here a little bit to make it kind of faded up there something like that I think just add some lights and some contrast making it dark here and light here because the light is coming in here um, what I'm going to be doing next is to press Control shift n again to create a new layer and then Control shift alt e to uh, paste the photo here I don't know what you call that but then I'm going into filter and I'm going to apply a camera raw filter because I think it looks a little bit too cold. So I'm just going to warm it up just a smidge, to be honest. And for the next step, you can actually go and try to make a little bit of a flare. Uh, I love adding a little bit of flare in. I create the new layer and I'm just going to make something that I look, think looks great up here make kind of a flare. I'm not really sure if it's going to work on this image though. I set it to screen and then I just changed the opacity right here to see what I like. And we're just going to see if I can make it a little bit smaller maybe. If I like it taking over the image, like I think it's a little bit too much. So we're going to make it a little bit smaller and I just have to erase the edge right here. So that added on the flare. Uh, usually I do a lot more, uh, more complex process when adding flares, but in this image it's just like the light is up here somewhere. So this will do just fine in my opinion. Now that we are back in Lightroom, I instantly see that I kind of want to, I kind of want to change the angle a little bit. It looks a little weird. I don't know if that's just me, but I think it looks a little bit better like this. Uh, maybe go a little bit back there, something like this. And also something I see is that it's a little grayish. So I think I want to add a little bit of contrast back into it. It's probably not the most healthy thing to be honest, but we're still doing it. And that's it for today, guys. I'm sorry if I didn't go a lot of in-depth on a lot of stuff, but I promise you I will make more tutorials explaining a lot more. But I, I don't know a lot of the technical stuff. Uh, I just do what I think looks good and that I'll have to do. Uh, but I'll make a lot more tutorials and hopefully a lot more tutorials that you will like. Uh, and. To end it off, I want to give a huge shout out to Michael Holson. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong or Gated360 on uh, Instagram for providing me the pictures of this awesome looking Ferrari. It looks like you're having a lot of fun in it. Uh, yeah, so that's it for today, guys. 